Hello people and welcome to another dose of Drew and this is another knife review. This time on my table today is the MKM or Maniago Knife Makers. Maniago Knife Makers. This is the Tamavo designed Jesper Rocknes. I'm going to try. Anyway, this particular one is made by Makita, one of the multiple companies that make up MKM or Maniago knife makers. There's several of them in that town. One of those towns in Italy where you have lots of the same industry in one town, one of those towns I would like to visit. Would love to be able to walk around and see these guys' factories and showrooms. That would be great. That being said, this is a particularly special one. This is a Blade HQ exclusive. This is the Tamavo in M390. This one happens to have uh, the natural, quote unquote, natural G10 along with, and, and was really what I normally not, honestly, I'm not a coated blade guy. Generally speaking, I'm not. You might see a few things where I do, one, I'll, one you'll see in a little bit that'll show up later. Uh, this is the Kershaw Blur. This one happens to be an M4, which means it is a non-stainless steel, which is where the coating is something I don't, I, I'm, I'm happy about, or an oxidized coating or something like that. This Tamavo, however, M390, relatively, it's a little over three ounces, about three and a half ounces. This is about a, oh, we'll get some actual measurements since I don't have a scale, but I do have my calipers. So we got zero inches. We will do a quick little uh, caliper read on the thickness. Yeah, 0 0.138. Let's see if we can get a better reading somewhere up here. 0 0.137. Pretty close to 0.14, so it's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch thick, right? We'll get up here, see if we can get these tips right into the, right behind there on the edge. Comes down to a pretty thin edge, 19 to 18 and a half thousandths, and that's, yeah, that's right, about 18 and a half. Right behind the edge there, very nice, very slicey, very good edge. Couple of things I'm going to start. A couple of things I'm going to start nitpicking on some of this stuff, and I'll, I'll do a. I'm going to be doing a video on, on my specifics on nitpicking. Very, very even secondary grind line with a little bit of thinness right here. Get it where you can see. You can see how it goes thin and then thick. But this side is far more even, far more uniform all the way down its length as far as the the width of that secondary bevel, which. There's a lot of things it's getting into, I'm getting into it now, but it definitely means that not only is the steel straight, but so is the grind, right? Or the grind at least follows the steel. If the steel's bent or wobbly or anything like that, even just a little bit, it'll it'll change that. And you can look for like where it's, if it's shorter here and taller here, stuff like that. Steel straight, even though you may not be able to see that. One of the reasons why this, again, is one of my personal lives, this was not sent to me. I picked this one up. I've enjoyed the Tamavo's looks. I thought it was engineering. It has, for you know, it is on bearings. It has a, if you can see that inside there, it has a captive stop pin or a hidden one. It's, it's actually attached to the blade. Uh, liner lock. The G10 is nice. It can be dyed as it is the natural color. A lot of people like to see, like this green color kind of gives it that radioactive. I, I like to dye these personally. Um, I have my favorite colors, this being what it is. I picked this one over the others because there is some micarta versions out there that are fantastic. And also my normal favorite is the carbon fiber, but hey, this one has black hardware. This, as far as I can tell, is the only version of the Tamavo that has black pocket clip, black blacked out hardware. Uh, I, again, I'm not a big fan of the, the blade being there, but if that's what it takes to get me the uh, blacked out hardware and that nice, just single color, not super shiny, not over the top, I'm good. I'm not doing it for self. I don't like, I don't, I don't necessarily always want my knife to be sparkly. I, I don't need it to be like sparkly, like Iris at the bar for anyone who gets that Rain Man reference. Um, I'm, I kind of like it to not. I kind of like the black. I don't wear silver pants. I do, however, have some black or dark, a lot of dark blue and denim where the pocket clip blends. Uh, it's more of a fashion statement than anything. I, I want my knives to blend into my pocket. I have brown ones. I have black ones. I have some. For those who might know, this 
gets really close to some some darker khakis. I have some like there's all sorts of stuff. Anyway, black hardware. As far as I know, this is the only one. Everything else is there. There are some. This is not the cheapest version. I'll tell you right now. There's a black micarta, national micarta. There's a couple of micarta handled versions and some other G10 that are right up there as far as low cost. These things, the Tamavo can reach upwards of two hundred dollars, but you can get these now. With, I believe the black micarta and national micarta is available everywhere. This particular version with the blacked out hardware and national G10 is only available at Blade HQ, but the other micarta ones are all over the place, and they're right in the 150, 130 to 150 ish range, depending upon where you go and which particular model. Much more affordable. And again, we're talking about a knife M390 G10 bearings, liner lock. Uh, hidden or captive stop pin, which you want anyway, integrated stop pin, so you have it shouldered on both sides, which gives you a lot of space on there and a lot of surface area for it to be stopped, as well as just integral to the blade, right? It's stopping into the liners, it's integral to the blade. It costs a little more to do it with, it's a little more in blade stock as opposed to just a pin, but man, it uh, it pays off in durability. That being said, I will get into the ergonomics in just a little bit because. If you've never seen or a review on a Voxnase knife um, or his design, like there's, it, they pretty much all are. He's, he has some fantastic ergonomics when it comes to his knives, um, even lo for a lot of hands, but he, he, he definitely tends to have a good, good solid pinch grip bit as well as the thumb over. The ergonomics generally, it's, if you are wondering about gambling, you will more often get a nice, solid, ergonomic Vox design than one that's not. So if you're like, I need a gamble, it's you got pretty good odds that it's going to be a good ergonomic design. That being said, I want to jump in real quick to some of our fantastical, some of, well, we'll just say uh, size comparisons. First things first, to the large and small CJRB Feldspar. As you can see, very close in size to the small felt. I mean, very close in size. And similar in ergonomics with a little bit thicker here. So if you have the small one, you're like, ooh, that's just almost too small. I wish it was just a little bit taller so it would fit in my hand. This is you know, almost too narrow. Well, guess what? The Tamavo is just like that and it fits just like that. So give me an idea. Real close to the small feldspar there for anyone who's used to those knives or has them. They're pretty sweet. All right, running up. I'll do another one here real quick. This one's going to be pretty easy. Para 3. This one, the lightweight version and Para 2. Video shall be coming out if, it, if I haven't already posted it by the time this one goes for the uh, scale swap on that Para 2 there. But that's what we got. We have the Para 2, Para 3, and I may have a, let's see if I can get some of that grease off there. Hey, let's chat, let's halos around all the shiny bits. Um, so yeah, there's there's the, that if in case anyone doesn't know, flitanium carbon, carbon fiber on that one. Not bad. S45. Anyway, as you can see, much, 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 much closer to the pair of three. It is right in, the, I mean, my goodness. And while cutting edge is actually a slight bit, the curve, yeah, cutting edge even goes to the, to the MKM. No doubt about it. It's got a nice... It actually has a little bit more hand space and a little bit more cutting edge than the Para 3 Lightweight. It doesn't have the same, uh, you know, flickability and a lot of other stuff where, you know, it's a liner lock, not a compression, blah, blah, blah. Again, a little bit more hand space, no, no hook right there so your fingers can trail off. Not a bad deal. It gives you a little bit more for its size, which isn't half bad. A little bit of an odd one here. Oh, wait, no, I got one more here. Sorry about that. The Kershaw blur, and as you can see, the blur is slightly larger, and of course, not just any leak, but a random leak. Real close to that size, too. Leak being, of course, supremely thin, blade sock, and all that stuff. But as far as overall size, yeah, you're looking at real close to the leak. Um, compact package, big knife bits. Oh, a couple of little offset ones here just to get it going. We have the 
benched, bench made mini grip Tillion. As you can see, it is slightly larger than the mini grip. And of course, one more here, and that is the small, the model, the Rat 2, R2D2, Rat 2 and D2. I don't have it in white and blue, but that's the old R2D2 there. Right, real close to the same size again. It is traveling right in these areas. A little bit more hand space than the Rat too. With that, with that, but your hand can come off. But with this, it's got just a little bit more hand space on it. And same as before, similar cutting edge. Got a taller blade. We're talking M390, all sorts of other stuff. Significantly higher price tag, about three times as much. So be that what it will. Anyway, size is right in there. All right, so we've got. Size comparison, you guys have a good idea what we're talking about here. Let's get into some of the other nitty gritties because let, let me give you this is I expected this knife to be good. I'm a fan of Esper Voxney's MKM. I've had a couple of their knives of the quality. It's one of those things where was it a Friday night one? Was it one of those weeks where they said, Hey, we've got to really push production? You guys go. I'm not sure. I've had a couple of not particularly fantastic MKM knives before and I have also had particularly good ones this is a particularly good one so getting into the damn nice criteria the design of this one it is fantastic it is classic looking you immediately realize it's a knife you can see it's a pocket knife it is a classic drop point shape with just a little bit flat and then some belly at the tip getting a nice robust tip Extremely thick, jimping in the right place, full flat grind all the way up there. I thought it might be a saber. Let's see if I can get some in there. But it really comes off. It starts to taper to a distal taper with that full flat grind all the way down, which is nice. A distal taper really helps a lot of things. It's not huge, but and there's the really big taper, and then it's just light. I mean, it looks like to me like that is a full flat grind. It might be a partial saber. You know, it's hard to tell. I'm trying to get a light where you can see where it goes right there and then stops. If there's flat, it's not much. Maybe 15, maybe about 25 to maybe 30% of the length of the blade. Again, the coating makes it actually, it's a pretty good coating. It makes it really hard to tell where those minor, you can tell where the plunge grain is, but so I told the minor stuff. The design, I could go on. This is super nice. If anyone has ever held a CRKT, uh, PLR3, um, you're going to see a couple of things here. I have one of the scales from it. You'll see there's a whole, whole, whole lot of, well, let's just say similarity there when it comes to that handle. Um, and that is a very good thing because the PLR3 is a fantastic little knife. Um, but this is, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So the design, the biggest complaint I got is that there's the lanyard hole back here, but it's also got a barrel, so you can tie a lanyard on there. It would have been nice if the clip could have been pulled back a little bit. My complaint about it not being deep carry is the equivalent of approximately about a quarter inch of deep carry. So there's my biggest complaint, right? This is very, this is a very taut clip seems to spread a little bit compared to there there's there's a lot of little things that are just a matter of oh there's a way i could find the there's the saber grind it's full flat it's saber grind to there so yeah about a third of the way finally got a light where i can find some clay where i can see the actual contours yeah design is there aesthetics oh man it's a classic knife you pull this out it looks classic you, you can tell right there you can get back if you need to and get get in there you know this isn't necessarily a super heavy duty knife, but it's in there. I love the aesthetics of this knife. I love the classicness of it. I love that it looks comfy. It looks like a knife. It doesn't look like a, you know, a super weapon. It looks like a regular old pocket knife. I'm going to open a package with. I'm going to cut some string. I'm going to, if I have to, shave my fingernails. I'm going to, if I have to, I'm going to have to cut some gauze. I'm going to have to open up some paper, cut a box trim a little bit if i have and i have not with this particular knife, but i've done before i trim my plants if i need to with them i have a patio garden so i trim my plant there's all sorts of stuff the aesthetics of this knife let me know that i can do it and the mechanics back that up it's not super drop shut right 
Oh boy, I better try and do this on camera. So that's really good. But then eh, this has, ooh. So there's the click over, right? It takes a little bit to get in there. But this is also a coated M390 blade. I have not pulled this apart to clean it out since I got it. So there's still all of the buildup of the bearings, the detent ball, and everything else carving its own little path, its own little race, and getting all this coating as it wears that coating down and creates its own little race. That will not only get smoother, I'll need to take this apart and clean that gunk out, which will make this go awesome. Right now, it's snappy. And you can shake it down, but it's a little tight. Uh, it is pretty much perfectly sandered. There's no worries about that. It is just a little tight in the action and it has not been cleaned out. Mechanics, fantastic. Um, I expect it to get better. I, I won't say it's perfect, right? It's, it's, it's not, because I expect it to get better as it wears through the coating. I would actually expect a non-coated blade to have a much better action out of the box. It's bearings on a detent. It is really hard to mess. I shouldn't say it's really hard to mess that up. That is not true. In today's knife world, professional knife makers have this type of thing down. This is not new technology. Tuning a detent is something that most knife makers should be able to, most folding knife makers should be able to do at this point, especially if they have any significant volume and experience. So to say that that's huge, um, I just expect it. I, I, I've had enough, again, enough experience with coated blades and all that sort of stuff to know that's how it works. So I'm not upset about those particular pieces of mechanics. Next thing on here is going to be the noteworthy points. This is a Vox Ace knife. This is an Italian knife, slightly crowned spine. It's got uh, blacked out hardware. The G10 natural takes a, takes a color. Do I want to do purple? Do I want to do red? Do I want to do apricot? No, I don't. But point is, I could do it. You can do almost anything. Personally, I think a nice teal or aqua would go really cool, but that might be hard to make. We'll see. Anyway, that being said, noteworthy points on it again. It's Italian. It's a Jesper Vox design. Uh, if you are not uh, anywhere familiar with the brand um, Giant Mouse, uh, that is also Jesper Voxnase, as well as another partner. You know, I'm not... Anyway, they're good. They're a good brand. Good team. This is not a giant mouse. I should not have it in there. This is, again, a Vox design, specifically built directly by Makita Knives under the MKM brand M390. I mean, the intended purpose of this thing is a day-to-day -day pocket knife. This is meant to hold an edge. It's meant to take an edge, hold an edge, do what you want with it. I mean, honestly, this is a, from what I can tell, from what I felt, what I've seen, a little bit of cutting it in, this seems to be an M390 blade with a really good heat treat. Uh, the coating does not impede its cutting process, cutting progress. It doesn't have a problem with any, anything else. Um, the intended purpose of this knife is a EDC for a, I don't want to say gentleman, but for a non hard use. Can it take it? Yeah, it's steel, it's lion lock, it's got a shoulder. Can, can you abuse it a little bit? Yeah, should you? No. Um, but it is, however, a really nice pocket knife. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that a little bit on my thumb. That was that little bit of dig in right there where I started to laugh because if you heard any little tink, that was the edge of that knife just barely doing a dig into my thumb. Not bleeding, but uh, that didn't take much, y'all. <laughs> it's sharp. So yeah, it's an intended purpose as a pocket knife for general use, general daily use. And I don't mean going out and chopping up trees or... You know, needing to hack down brush or anything like that. I mean, general everyday stuff. Opening up letters, opening up packages, cutting string, cutting twine. Things you might need it to do. Opening up bags, opening it. It'll do it. If you need to open up a bag of rocks, this will open up a bag of rocks. Why? I don't know. You might. It can do it. The cost and or value. This is where it gets tricky. And I hate, hate to do this with so many knives. It's kind of... There's a lot of versions of this knife. And something like the G10 version, 
I believe that's right around 130, 140. I think it's like 139.99. I could be wrong by the time this video comes out, but I believe it's right around 140 bucks with the micarta versions being right around 150. 150 for a well-made M390 um, pocket knife. That's, I mean, it's Italian, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you can find others that maybe, but this isn't, this isn't far out there. I mean, my goodness, uh, what would be round, round there? You've got M390. I mean, we're talking, you want to get a special version of, say, the pair of three, 140 bucks. Okay, so there we are. You want to get something else? Let's see if I can, oh, I don't have it here. Uh, but just, uh, I guess, oh, yes, I do. There it is. Uh, I do not have a review out on this knife yet, but it'll be coming if you haven't already. It's a Spyderco. You can get a Sage 5 S30V, right around 140, 150 bucks. Is it a good buy? Yeah. It's a good value. Is it? Ex is it outstanding? It's like, oh my goodness. Mm -mm. No. But it is a good value. And that kind of brings me to the next part. If you're expecting this knife to be magical, it's not. If you're expecting it to unseat one of your favorite knives that's just really different, like a pair of is it so much? No. No. What about my pair of three and I have an S90 V or M4 or Spy 27 or S45 Yen. I don't think they have them though. I really wish they'd make them an S30. Um, is it that much better? Um, better is a hard one. It's not as light. I mean, this thing's heavy. We're talking at least three and a half ounces, so kind of a different category. But yeah, it's a good value. It's right in there. It's got bearings. It's got a little bit different construction. It's something that's nice. If you pull it out, whether it be micarta or G10, it's not something most people are used to, even though it has a, a knife person might ask you, is that, what is that? You know, they might notice it as something. Most of the people are like, oh, you have a pocket knife. No one would know. It's very nondescript. Some people are threatened by anything that's got a tip on it. I don't know what else to say about that. Some people just feel like it could possibly stab me. So I don't know. My goodness. And these are the same people who walk around on a cooking show where there are chef knives that are like eight inches long that are actually designed to cut meat. Just saying. So you can't help some people. And really, I mean, honestly, there's there's better knives for that. But that's not the point here. Expectations. It's right tip up only. So if you're expected to be left-handed friendly, it's not. So that, that's an expectation you can probably get out of your head. It's definitely not lefty friendly. Um, if you have a lanyard, um, it has a lanyard. Let's see if I can get that to the show. It has a lanyard hole, but if you can see at an angle like that, it is not chamfered. So you have a 90 degree relatively sharp edge, unless I can, let me see. Uh, it might. Let me see. Nope. Oh, I can't see the chamfer. At any way. I, and I've looked at this several times. I thought I might have just seen it and I'd been wrong like some of the other stuff. But nope. So it's not chamfered. It does have the barrel. So you can thread a light one around the barrel. And have it be pretty much protected from the blade by the two, uh, two standoff screws. So you do have an option. It is... One of the only, I don't even use a lanyard, and I really honestly just wish the lanyard hole was gone and you just they did just put a thinner barrel in there. So you can, you know, or like a pin or something, so you can have that lanyard pin protected by these two and, you know, blam, you're good. Well, they didn't. All too often nowadays I see things like G10 and other stuff with these sharp angles on a lanyard hole that will just quickly wear, wear away on a lanyard. The more and more you pull it, it'll start just rolling in there is what it is. But uh, yeah, it's it's going to live up to your EDC expectations. This knife is good. It's sharp. It's got a highly corrosion resistant steel that holds a good long edge on most materials. 
um, generally flowing lines. The aesthetics, some might find it, but the flowing lines, the general bits of it, it's a little bit narrow, you know, the way it's, it's, got, it's a good knife. It's a very good pocket knife. And if you expect it to be, you'll get there. If you expect it to be an overwhelming bargain, it's not. Again, the $140, $150 versions, you can quickly get, go from G10 and Micarta to carbon fiber and titanium and go from 140 to 150, clear up to the 180 to two or yeah, 180 to 200 dollar range. So it quickly goes up to a much more sense. But if you're one of those people who absolutely has to have titanium, guess what? They got you. They have titanium. You can get shiny titanium and it'll be all sparkly and everything. It's great. So they've they've got that. They even have one that. Uh, it's sort of a, a, they even have a blue anodized. It's got like starburst patterns. It's got these lines, these mid lines. It, it, or no, I shouldn't say starburst. It's more like long, longitudinal lines. It, they're curvy. It's nice. It's beautiful. If, you, if you're if you into that sort of thing. I like, I wanted the black hardware. I'm not going to lie. It's M390 on pretty much everything. I wanted the black hardware. That was the biggest reason for me to purchase this particular knife. Oh, so I would have probably gone for my card or if I'd have waited and saved up a little bit more, more money and gone for the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, if you don't know, is one of my absolute favorite handle materials. And I have a bias towards it. So that being what it said, the design, yeah, I mean, it's a Vox. I'm going to try and get that other language down one of these days. But yes, I don't know, something like that. Design. Fantastic. The aesthetics, I like them. I think they're good, classic. You might not like them. You might want something more fancy. I like the classicness of it. The mechanics, I don't want to say impeccable, but pretty close. The the coatings on the blade and stuff like that give it a little bit of a rough bit so it's not as smooth as some of the other bearing knives. But I b b I'm willing to bet and believe. So yes, even just popping it out, it doesn't always... You have to kind of get a little bit. Until that... I cleaned it out and get that thing worn in a little bit. I expect it a little bit, so that's not too off. And again, the noteworthy points on it, it's just a good knife. Its intended purpose is exactly what you should expect, and it lives up to all those expectations. And while the cost is not particularly cheap, the value quotient is high, especially on the lower cost ones with the with the G10 and my car to handle. So you can really expect a good value from this knife. And if you're willing to spend the money because you're like, I just don't want those. I want titanium or like me, carbon fiber or titanium. Those two are both, you know, right, right neck and neck for me on some of these, especially this one. The blue one would look nice. They're up there for me. That being said, this is pretty cheap. So there you go, guys. This has been a really long review on this. I wanted to get out there. I've been waiting to review this night for a long time. It lived up to my expectations and even exceeded a couple. So... I highly recommend this knife. Again, this has been my review of MKM Tamavo. This has been a dose of Drew. You guys, I can't wait to do another one of, one of these. So, uh, you know, I hope you guys like this video. Watch it twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been a dose of Drew. I am Seth Drew, and you guys have a great rest of your days.